I now have new fidget slugs that are available on my Etsy store and they're called candy slugs. They're really cute, really bright colored. If you're interested, please go check it out. I do ship to Europe and USA. Hello everybody, welcome to our channel and today we're going to talk about... <laughs> you don't know, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> we got a two-part video today. So first of all, we're making a comeback with Dear Sadie and P. If you haven't been around for a long time, basically back in the day, we were getting a lot of emails um, from people like us, people who relate to us with age gaps or having a crush on somebody who's older than them. And we were uh, replying to those letters in video form. So it was Dear Sadie and P. And we were replying to those letters. Recently, I got one of these letters on Instagram mm -hmm. and it inspired me to let's bring it back. So we're bringing back Sadie and P. Before we get into that, we're gonna have a mini try on haul because we were sent these awesome shoes by a company called Vivaya. They come in these really cute boxes. They're made of recycled materials. Good job. <laughs> so I got these cute little heels and you got flats. I got flats and I hate heels. Hold on, we have one more pair each. Let's unbox the others out of here. Oh. Okay, and let's do a little try on haul. You can go first and I'm gonna talk about like some of the features of these shoes because I think it's really cool. We got sure. a little foot cam going on over here, by the way. Look, let me set that up, hold on. shoes come with this um, removable insole that's supposed to be deodorizing and these are actually machine washable the flats not the heels the heels you can hand wash and if you know, want to know my size is 38 and a half my size is 40 you have very narrow feet I do I must admit they are foldable so it's really easy to pack obviously they're made out of fabric they're really soft and they don't hurt your feet which I love because I have very sensitive feet. Um, this is the test for a good shoe. It has to bend. This is made out of the anti-slip rubber, so you're not going to slip. These beautiful ones have uh, these removable bows, so you can take the bows out or you can put them somewhere else, like on the side. Yeah, again, you can wash them, which is amazing. You're always going to have these clean shoes. Are you preparing for a wedding? Right, I have the dresses, I have the shoes. We're ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, so if you would like to get yourself a lovely pair of shoes, they are very comfortable, by the way, I have to say. Like, the backs yeah. are really soft. and There's like a little cushioning in the back, so it doesn't hurt your heels. And you can use code Sadie for 18% off your order. Thank you, Vivai. Vivaya? I keep Vivaya. saying Vivai. Vivaya. It seems like... Okay. Vivaya. So let's get into the letter. Okay. Okay, so this letter was sent to us by Isabella and she said I could say her name. So okay. I'm gonna say her name. Okay, so she wrote, well, the thing is I've been into older women my whole life, even before realizing I was not straight. In fact, my crush was my kindergarten teacher. After that, I had a crush on my mom's friend in elementary school, my English teacher in middle school, my Spanish teacher in high school, my biggest crush at that point. Of course, I'm in love with Kate Blanchett and other middle-aged actresses, but I'm talking about real people right now. Then last year, a girl who's one year younger than me asked me out, and after dating for a month, she told me that she only wanted a friendship. That absolutely broke me. 
and I'm finally recovering from it after a year, even if I still low-key love her. But then a month ago, I started going to a painting classes, and with just two lessons, I felt so fucking hard for my teacher that I feel like I'll never want anybody else. She's 23 years older than me, but I was shocked at first because she seems incredibly younger. I've never seen her without a mask, and that sucks, of course, because I have no idea what she looks like. <laughs> but honestly, at this point, her eyes are just enough for me. She's also very petite and feminine, like a little fairy, if you want. And it's perfect for me because I'm very tall and muscular, and I like the opposite of my aesthetic when it comes to relationships. But I also love her smell and her voice so much that I could cry. I know I seem so dramatic because I've seen her for literally 12 hours in total, but I fall very hard very quickly. <laughs> I hope you can relate, lol. So my question is, what should I do? I think she's straight, but I feel like she wouldn't mind finding herself in love with a girl. I don't know why. I know that I'm one of her favorite students and that among all the things we've talked about, we agree on everything, but that's just it. The big problem is that when I'm in love, it takes so long for it to fade away and I'm scared that that's gonna stop me from being able to love someone else in the meantime. I don't know if you have an answer for me, but even the smallest advice is well accepted. Very nice letter. Thank you for writing to us. And uh, Well, I can relate on a lot of things because yeah. I remember having a crush on my kindergarten teacher, but I didn't know it was a crush at the time. I just felt like fascinated by her. Mm -hmm. And I had a crushes all throughout primary school, middle school, always on teachers, so mm -hmm. celebrities. <laughs> Irina Menzel was my like big crush when I was young. Anyway, so what would we give as advice? So there's 23 year age gap, mm -hmm. a bit less than us, we have 28. So and she doesn't know yeah. if she's gay. So uh, this message, uh, I mean, the message for me is this one. Uh, I'm not gonna give you like advice about, um, find out if uh, you know she's straight or she's not or ask her out for a coffee no absolutely not what struck me about your letter is your feelings and uh, and the way you feel the way you fall in love like a, as soon as you saw this person you immediately fell in love with this person so what i'm telling you is not to let this feeling go so my message is not about again the, the person you fell in love. It's about your feeling. Grasp onto it. Just hold on to it. Yeah, you're a beautiful person, okay? You're a beautiful person. I can feel it. And it doesn't matter if you are keeping on loving someone, being in love with somebody, it will prevent you from falling in love with somebody else. That never happens. If that somebody else will be on your way, you will, it, and it's destiny, don't worry, you will fall in love with the other person, okay? Uh, maybe the right person for you in order to start a relationship and everything. But this is really you. Like, what you're feeling right now, the love for this teacher, is you. Hold on to that. Do not forget. And when you, like, you are like, uh, oh, I cannot, I cannot obtain this person, I'm in love. That doesn't mean that you have to obtain this person. That means for you to hold on the feeling you have. I don't know how else I can explain this. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it clear? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Like, I've had a lot of platonic crushes as well, like unrequited when they yeah. don't respond yeah. um, because mostly they were straight in my case like all the older women I had crushes on my teachers they were all straight so it wasn't even a question of whether I can be with them it was just like I know it's one-sided and I was I was like you I was like so in love with my Turkish teacher back when I was in Istanbul and she was older than me obviously and I was like in love with her smell in love with just like her energy, anything, her voice, her face, everything. And I was totally like obsessed with her in a way, but I I never came forward because I knew my feelings would not be reciprocated and I knew if I did that our friendship would end. So, well, this is the thing is that uh, I'm seeing a requited love in a different way. Mm -hmm. Uh, at this point of, in my life. Mm -hmm. I require the love is always seen as something hopeless because we are focusing too much on being rejected or on this other person being unattainable. 
-hmm. for uh, many reasons. Maybe this person is not gay. Maybe this person is gay, but is with somebody else. It can be any reason. So, and it's always seen in a very like uh, um, negative way. negative way. But really, uh, unrequited love should be seen as uh, an opportunity to not to focus on the person you cannot have, but to focus on your feelings that you're having in that moment. Mm -hmm. Because that feeling is precious. That feeling of feel, feeling in love is absolutely priceless, all right? So bathe in that. Do not focus too much, I'm not going to have this person. Just bathe in that feeling because this is real, real true self. And it's amazing. Just, yeah. you know, it lighten up the fact that... Uh, uh, you might not have this person because it's not the point of unrequited love. At least this is my conclusion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're kind of saying this in a way already assuming that nothing could ever happen between them. Maybe that's not true. We don't know. Like, we don't know this person and we don't know your destiny. Maybe there might be something that happens with this person. Um, but this is in case if it doesn't, and you still have these really strong feelings that you can't let go of and you can't forget. Um, like, I really relate to that. I've had that happen a lot of times. But the thing is, like you said, for me at the time, that feeling in itself got me through a lot of rough periods of my life. Yes. And that feeling in and of itself was like something really, like a treasure, like precious, something precious that I found. Mm -hmm. And um, like... Sometimes I feel like the feelings, the intensity of the feelings I had for these people are even more intense than something I will have in a real relationship. Exactly, exactly. You hit the nail. <laughs> like, I don't Absolutely. think I've been that obsessed with yes. you particularly, it for happened, example. It happened to me too. Yeah. It happened to me too. That's why I'm saying hold on to that feeling yeah. because unrequited love, unattainable love, it gives you... Uh, a feeling that is higher than whatever you can have with in a relationship, like when you cannot attain things, and uh, and that's why it's precious. Um, yeah, that that's also that also serves a purpose. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. And okay, in terms of practical advice, like if you want to approach her, if you want to try your luck, let's say, I would say like go really slowly, lean towards a friendship with her first. Um, in case she's straight because you know in, if she's straight and you go straight to ask her on a date it's gonna be like a clear sorry no I'm just I'm straight but if you lean towards a friendship and you get a little bit closer with her like doing things hanging out stuff like that you can see her face finally um, then you can kind of feel into it you know you can kind of feel if this is going towards a romantic thing or if it's just gonna stay a friendship I'm not going to give you that advice because I think that uh, I believe a lot in destiny mm -hmm. and uh, when uh, there is an actual um, correspondence of feelings, it will be felt naturally. Mm -hmm. If uh, you have to force into it, you again are shifting the focus from I want to have this thing now and uh, you're kind of uh, start seeing things that are not there. and, uh, and uh, Yeah, but when you yeah. had a crush on somebody, didn't you make a couple of the first moves like even if it was unrequited you wanted to be a bit closer to this person like for for me I with my teacher yeah I was actually having like email correspondence with her yeah. about like books I was reading music I was listening to films I was watching yes. I was going to her you know during lunch break and having conversations with her just mm -hmm. hanging out and yes. that was like you I don't know connection. filling my spirit with yeah exactly connection yeah and didn't you have that with your I did, I did. I wanted that connection for sure. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, you know, nice to have that connection, but then uh, it was always a confirmation that uh, sh they were not into me, like I was mm. into them. And so, yeah. and that would make me feel, oh, this, uh, we'll never get this. And we'll go into that dark places where you can't have it, you know? Yeah. And uh, dark places, like kind of depression, little depression here and there. Mm. So, yeah, and uh, and I wasn't focusing on really like th that feeling. It's something that people don't do, you know, unless you're mm. told to. Oh wow, you know, I can actually 
feel this feeling because sometimes when you go into those places so I cannot have this you want to kill that feeling I don't want to feel like that for this person I will never have this person so I don't want to feel like that mm -hmm. so uh, it's like uh, either I have this person and I keep on this feeling or you want to kill that feeling you can't kill a feeling you have to honor it and uh, and give it some credit you know there is a function for that feeling to be there even if that person doesn't want you you know mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i mean when i look back at my all of my unrequited crushes inclu including celebrities <laughs> oh like it's always a fond memory of what i felt even what i imagined with this person yeah. it could never happen like i had dreams with these people yeah you know and yeah. things were happening in my dreams but I knew they were not going to happen in real life. So yeah. even that's something precious, I feel like. Also, if you believe in manifesting a partner or something, manifestation, um, like you can focus on the feelings you have for this person and maybe that same feelings will manifest with somebody else in the future. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I feel like my last celebrity crush had a lot of similarities to you <laughs> and it was right before I met you yeah and um, I was never attracted to that type of woman before but then I was attracted to her a lot and I feel like it was priming me for meeting you yeah you know so it could be something like that too you never know <laughs> by the way this person was Lana Paria from Once Upon a Time so yeah I hope this helped uh, really, and uh, thank you again for writing to us. And we invite other people to, to write to us if they want to. I'll put um, our email right here yeah. and in the description. And we can do more of these. Yeah. I kind of miss these. Yeah, we kind of miss them too. So thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget to check out Vivaya mm -hmm. if you would like very comfy shoes. And they're good price too. Yeah. They're not very expensive, so that's good. Yeah. And thank you so much for uh, uh, you know supporting this channel and uh, thank you so much for those people from the very first day that we opened this channel you know they they've been there like faithful you know to this and uh, thank you so much for all your support we love your comments even if sometimes the comments are not that good just comment just comment <laughs> and give your opinion and uh, wait i want to know yeah let me know in the comments of this video if you've been watching us even back when we were doing the Dear Sadie and Peace. I want to oh, know yeah. how many of you remember this and... How know. many of you missed it? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so big kiss to everybody. See you next time. Bye.